Hi everyone. Welcome back to Bluegrass Dreams to Scenes. My name is Cheryl. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be talking about the wren blouse, but before we get to that, I just want to say thank you to all those who have subscribed to my channel, uh, those who make comments week after week. I really appreciate things that you're sharing with me, uh, ideas, tips. One of the tips I received about a month ago was to get a mic, and I was surprised at how much that made a difference. Unfortunately, today, when I went to plug my mic in, it uh, broke. The little tabby end that goes into the phone broke right off. So, I'm without a mic today. I'm going to try to just buy one locally somewhere so that that happens again. I can definitely see why a cordless mic would probably be the best way to go, and I will price one of those. I know on Amazon you get a set of two and it's $100. And right now I don't want to spend $100 on a mic. I was comfortable with the $22 mic. So anyway, I don't have a mic today and I do apologize. It's not because I don't want to wear it. It's not because I forgot it. It's because I broke it. So please bear with me through this video. All right, the wren blouse. My blouse basically looks like this. Um, if you attach this uh, part here, they call that a dress. Now, my blouse is falling somewhere around hip. So I'm thinking this had better be a really long uh, gathered skirt because I don't see how in the world that could be a dress. Um, maybe on someone shorter, um, it would be fine. I have a few things I want to say about this before we proceed on to the blouse itself. The booklet is very, very well thought out. It has nice diagrams. I love it that it's in a booklet fashion, um, stapled together even. You have nice charts. This is your finished um, measurements chart. Yeah, finished measurements chart there. But they also give you your size chart to look at your measurements and um, they have clear line drawings they talk about a custom fitting section so some ideas there to do um, things that you might need to do and they tell you that you have a 3 8 inch seam allowance on this page here the very first page for sewing and so I highlighted that to make sure that I didn't mess up you know um, they give you the sewing, there is a sewing tutorial apparently to watch, so you have that information. So just to let you know, this is a very well thought out little manual here. I love that they did that. T trying to trace the size that I needed because I was trying to get, you know, different sizes because I or technically with this pattern, I should have used three different sizes. Trying to trace lines. I mean, look, this is the bottom of the sleeve. That's how close 0 to 30 becomes when you're trying to get all that on pattern tissue. Now, the upper part of the sleeve is not so bad. Matter of fact, I did better tracing that line on my size than I did the lower part of the sleeve. And um, the reason I know is because I took my pattern piece after I cut it out and I put it on top of this one, and I found problems on each end as well as the lower part of the sleeve. It was so far off, I thought, I can't use this. It's, it's not right. And so I had no choice but to interface all my pattern pieces. Now, I'm tempted to do that with any pattern tissue, especially when I had to resort to cutting my pattern pieces out on the line I need. This is the front facing piece and I have trimmed that where I don't have 30 lines. I'm, um, I trimmed it on the line that I needed here and here and here. Uh, this was the part that goes, this edge right here where it says grain line, goes right underneath your front facing piece that you use, it's incorporated on, see right here. You know how it's incorporated and you have this you fold it back like that this edge is supposed to go underneath there not showing that very well 
But anyway, I think you get what I mean. I barely got mine under there. I mean, guys, it had to be like a scant um, eighth of an inch. So I've made note on here to cut, just add at least a half an inch to it. So that way, when I once I get it pinned down, I can trim off what I'm comfortable with and uh, just give myself a little bit more playroom. Other little tip is how I chose to mark my bust start. Okay, just for demonstration, I'm doing this on a just a scrap piece of fabric that's left over. I have my straight edge. I have, of course, cut away the lower part of my dart, and I'm going to fold the upper part up and move this pin just where it'll be out of the way up there. Now, the first line you wanna trace, of course, is the lower one. I don't really think it would matter, but that's the way they did it on the video I watched. So you just take your chalk. I went over a couple of times, so I want you to be able to see it. But of course, for yourself, you probably wouldn't have to do that. And I would use a chalk that doesn't mark as heavily as this red one is. Then you take it and go to the upper part of that dart and you do the same thing, marking using your straight edge to help you guide that. And it's wanting to That gives you the idea of what I did. I just won't worry about that. So when I take the pattern off, you should be able to see the line. So right there, you can see where the line is, right there for the dart. And you just fold that right sides together and stitch away. Tracing paper used to actually be like chalk paper. And when you used your tracing wheel to trace these lines such as a bus dart, this bus dart, it would actually mark So it. let's get on to the actual garment. So here's my shirt or my blouse. I'm very pleased with it. Um, it seems to fit really well. Um, I love the sleeves. They, they just, you know, this is gonna actually, the way it hangs, it'll balloon out a little bit on that seam and I chose to put my antique buttons on here. I had two buttons like that size for the cuffs and then I had some antique buttons uh, that had a little bit of color variation in them to use on the front and I'll see if I get that close enough where you can see that. So there that is. I decided to use six buttons on the front instead of seven because as you can see down here when we got to the bottom that sixth button, seven would have been somewhere in here, and I don't know, I just thought that was a little bit close there. So I chose for the time being just to leave that off. Um, I turned under a fourth of an inch on the facing, stitched it down in place. I used the Hong Kong finish on joining the sleeve to the uh, body. That, those are encased by Hong Kong finish. And I did search the side seams because I wanted to put in, in a slit. I wanted to do that. So I put that in and I just hand sewed down those, um, that seam allowance, because it's 3 8 again, it's just so tiny. And rolling that over was a little bit of a pain. Now, as far as doing the hem, I wanted to salvage as much of the length as I could. So I decided to take my, um, I had some leftover fabric and one of them was a very long length of salvaged edge. So I decided to cut a piece of salvaged edge and I stitched it to this section, the other front, and I, I didn't have to finish this salvaged edge. I just simply folded it up on the stitched um, seam folded that up and pressed it down and then just stitched that salvaged edge in place. 
I did that on all three sections. Let's make the cami to go with it though. And I'm going to try to use this pattern here. The Ogden cami. Um, I already know I'm gonna cut it just a little bit longer and I'm pretty sure I might have to add a little bit to the sides, but not sh not quite sure. I'll have to check my measurements again, but it looks like that I'll be okay. Um, I am going to go ahead and do the bias tape that you just stitch it down and it'll be flat. I'm not gonna try to make a tube because I know I won't have success with that. I used to be able to do that. I, I can't do that anymore. Get the cami made. I'm gonna do the sew along for the reversible apron that I made this pattern. Mary Malari Designs reversible apron pattern. You'll need to order that if you don't have one and um, to make this. Um, I suppose you could use just about any kind of apron pattern. You just would, you get the idea, you could probably do it. Um, I'm not gonna say that you have to have that pattern, but that's the pattern I used. Um, I went down to Artist Endeavors and uh, visit with my friend Cheryl. <laughs> and I bought this fabric for one side and this fabric for the other side and this one for my pockets. So those are be my three fabrics that I will use on this make. This apron I'm going to actually use in the sewing room because I want to be able to stick my sewing tools that I use like your scissors or seam ripper, little clippers, whatever. I just want to have them in my pocket. A little bit on the ASG project I have, we were challenged to use a jelly roll. Never bought one of those before. I bought one yesterday. Uh, to make a jacket or something, a blanket. I, I don't even know what I'm doing. I've uh, already reached out to a couple of my quilting friends to say, help. <laughs> and they've delightfully have said, anytime I want to get together with them, they'd be glad to help me out in my little tough situation. Of course, I know they're hoping to turn me into a quilter. But I think the only quilting projects I'll be doing is bags and maybe clothing and that'll be it. <laughs> I just don't see me doing a big quilt unless I decide I want to make something for the camper and be a little smaller. And I want to leave you again with this one. Everyone seemed to enjoy it. So I thought, you know what, this may become my sign off. Eventually I'll have it memorized. May your stash be ever plentiful. May your needle be forever sharp. And may your bobbin be eternally full. Have a great weekend, everyone, and thanks for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe.